So first, I just would like to uh, to give you some some impressions on 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 Samantha Badra and the and the and the images of, of Samantha Badra. So I selected a few uh, images from from Tun Huang, and uh, not Tun Huang, but Tun Huang. I'm sorry for the mistake. So on the on the left side, you can see you can see Manjushi on the, on his lion, and on the right side, you can see uh, Samantha Badra in the Tun Huang cave uh, uh, 159 from the early Tang dynasty. And uh, what's important to important to, to, to see here, first of all, with the, the, the elephants, so elephants of, of Samantha Badra actually has six tusks, you see, three on the, on the one side and, and three on the other side. And maybe one more, there is this here, is a, on, there's a, there's a Kunun slave actually who leads the, who leads uh, his lion who seems to be a, a black person black person so but you would think that he is from africa but actually this kunun slave comes from indonesia and uh, and they, they are usually uh, regarded to be very very well uh, uh, have good uh, way to deal with all kinds of uh, animals Okay, so the next from the Yulin Cave 25, also the, the left side you see Manjushri on his, on his uh, lion. And here you can see again Samantha Badra with, with his, on his elephant with the six stars and also the, the Kunun slave. And here the Tuhan Cave 25 to the lion and, and Manjushri on the left side and Samantha Badra. Again, you can see here it's not visible, but it's in one, two, three. You can you can you can you can see the six tasks of the elephant. There's no kunun slave in this. Okay. Oops. Oops. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So so another case of so the Yulin Yulin Cave Six, as you know, the the Yulin Cave is 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 different from the Tunhuang Cave. If you are not so familiar with with these sites, it's about um, I think 100, 105, 50 kilometers from Tunhuang, but it also includes a lot of caves with all kinds of interesting uh, images. Uh, so here, so it is it's late. It's from the later period, it's five dynasties and Song period. We can find several images there. But the same way, left side Manjushri. And the, and the right side, the uh, Samantha Badra. Again, Yulin Cave 13, you can see Samantha Badra, Manjushri, and Samantha Badra. Also, you can see here, here the six tasks of the elephant. Okay, so <clears throat> seeing all these images, the, the, the question is that, uh, of course, uh, which we should pose that uh, how the idea of, of Samantha Badra and, and, and his visual uh, appear, appearance actually uh, comes from. And when the whole Samantha Badra cult actually started in, in, uh, in China or in Central Asia. So Samantha Badra as an independent celest celestial bodhisattva was not worshiped in India, Central Asia or China before the fifth century. Chinese monks who travel to India does not remark the existence of any Samantha Badra cult on their journeys, and the image of Samantha Badra cannot be found in the centers of Indian Buddhist art. The images of Samantha Badra cult must have been associated with the translations and the spread of the Lotus Sutra. So, and how is it that? The Lotus Sutra was first trans translated into Chinese by Dharmaraksha in 289, under the title Cheng Fa Hua Jing. It became widely circulated after the translation and famous Buddhist monks of that time wrote commentaries on this sutra. Due to the popularity of this scripture, Kumarajiva, one of the most prominent translators of Chinese Buddhism, also translated in 406 under the title Miao Fa Lia Hua Jing. And we see the last chapter of the, of the uh, uh, a Lotus Sutra, which is called uh, Encouragement of the Bodhisattva Universal Virtue, chapter 28. Uh, we, can find, we can find the passage which actually depicts uh, the visual 
appearance of, of Samantha Bhadra. If in the later age, in the last 500 years of the corrupt and evil age, the bhikshus, bhikshunis, upasakas and upasikas, seekers, receivers and keepers, leaders and reciters, recites, reciters or copies desire to put in, in practice this low, this low flower sutra, they must with single mind devote themselves to it for three times seven days. After the three times seven days are fulfilled, I will among the six stars white elephant and together with countless bodhisattvas surrounding me, appear before those people in the form of all the living of the living delight to see and preach to them revealing instructing benefiting and rejoicing them moreover i will give them dharanis and obtaining these dharanis no human or no human being can injure them nor any women beguile them i myself also will ever protect them be pleased word honored one to permit me to announce these dharani spells so it's very important from this passage that in the Lotus Sutra, the, the Samantha Bhadra is a kind of is a kind of uh, uh, celestial bodhisattva who protects all those who somehow I mean spread uh, the teachings of the Lotus Sutra. But meanwhile, I mean it's very clear that, that, that as the test says, uh, the uh, <coughs> he 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 amounts he amounts on a six stars white. Uh, elephant. So, of course, the next text which we which we must take into consideration is the Samantha Bhadra Visualization Sutra, uh, which is a part of the so-called apocryphal Visualization Sutras, uh, the Sutra on the Ocean-like Samadhi of the Visualization of Buddha, Buddha, Kuan Fo Sam Mei Hai Ching, Amitayus Visualization Sutra, Kuan Wu Liang Shouting. I think yesterday you've heard a lot on this on this sutra uh, from Professor Eric Green. The third one, the sutra of visualization of Maitreya Bodhisattva's birth in Kushita heaven, spoken by the Buddha. The fourth, the Akashagarbha visualization sutra. And the fifth, the Bodhisattva's medicine king and medicine supreme visualization sutra. And the sixth is the Samantha Bhadra visualization sutra. So these special sutras, they make a special group of Apocryphal sutras, which in origin has some kind of connection with Central Asia or, or with, with China, which is indicated by the name apocryphal. So we cannot find uh, uh, any uh, previous uh, scriptures uh, in India. Of course, with under, another sutra, which is which somehow maybe a kind of predecessor of the Vizdarshan Sutra is the, is the Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva Sutra. This is good. Yeah. The Samantha Hopotolo uh, Pusa Ching, which is a translation which is attributed to the layman uh, uh, Nia Taujan, who was also an associate of the translator Dharma Raksha. Of course, this probably is, is, is not true. The first scripture that links Samantha Bhadra with the Buddhist uh, uh, repentance practice. So it's very important because in, the, in this sutra, which is a, spe, uh, a special, there's some other uh, visualization sutras as well, that, that here the visualization is very strongly connected, a kind of repentance practice, a kind of repentance ritual. This repentance ritual is very clearly uh, <clears throat> shown and in details, it's, uh, it's written in the sutra. The two interlocutors of the sutra are Manjushri and Samantha Bhadra, just as in several chapters of the Buddha Vatamsaka Sutra. That's fine. The Japanese scholars actually uh, he maintains that or he suggests that somehow this sutra could have been part of the of the Avatamsaka Sutra, which uh, I'm not so much sure because because Manjushri and Samantha Bhadra actually never never come to have any kind of uh, discussion together in the in the Avatamsaka Sutra. So in, in, in that case, it, it's, uh, maybe it's also it's an apocryphal uh, sutra. So anyway, the sutra starts with this sentence. If somebody wants to seek the way of the bodhisattva, or if good sons and good women wish to obtain limitless purity, what kind of dharma should be practiced in order to realize, realize it? 
Samantha Bodra explains that they can eliminate obstacles by respecting the Buddhas and repenting their sins and encouraging the Buddhas to teach and by collecting merits. So it's important that repenting and repentance uh, as a kind of method uh, uh, occurs in, in this sutra. Okay. So what is the, the, the Samantabhadra Visualization Sutra? It starts with a, with, with a question at the beginning of the sutra, after Buddha's announcement of his nirvana in three months, Ananda, Mahakashyapa, and Maitreya ask how living beings can practice Mahayana, purify their organs, and get rid of their sins after the extinction of the Tathagata. Buddha answers that he's going to explain the method of remembering uh, Samantabhadra, Yin Yang Fa, and the way to eliminate sins, Chu Tu Tsui Shu. But the one can or cannot see Samantabhadra. For those who wish to practice the supreme. I'm sorry. Uh, wish to practice the supreme teaching of Mahayana and the Samantabhadra practice, Bu Xian Xing. The Buddha stresses that even without entering Samadhi, by reciting and keeping Sung Chu, the text of the Sutra, one is able to see Samantabhadra. So the next, which is important for us, how actually Samantabhadra looks like in this, how it is text uh, uh, describes Samantabhadra. We can say that uh, it gives maybe the most elaborate uh, description of, of Samantabhadra in Buddhist literature. The Bodhisattva universal worthy is boundless in the size of his body, boundless in the sound of his voice, and boundless in the form of his image. Desiring to come to this world, he makes use of his sovereign psychic powers and compresses his stature to a smaller size. Because the people in Jambudvipa have the free weighty obstacles, by the power of his wisdom, he appears by transformation as mounted on a white elephant. The elephant has six tusks and seven limbs supports his body on the ground. Under its seven limbs, seven lotus flowers grow. The elephant is white as snow, the most brilliant of all shades of white, so pure that even crystal and Himalaya mountains cannot compare with it. The body of the elephant is 450 yojanas in length and 400 yojanas in height. At the tip of the six tusks, there are six bathing pools in each bathing pool grow 14 lotus flowers as large as the pools. The flowers bloom majestically like the king of celestial trees. On each of these flowers sits a jade maiden whose contents is red as crimson and whose radiance surpasses that of a god goddess. In the hand of that maiden, five harps appear by transformation, each of them with 500 musical instruments as its accompaniment. So, in order to, in, in addition to what we know about Samantha Bhadra from the Lotus Sutra, we know that he, he rides on a white elephant with six tusks. Here it's very, it's added that it has seven limbs. And then it, it gives a, a very elaborate, uh, I mean, uh, image of what happens on what in, in six tusks. You can see these bathing pools, and then these bathing pools, you can see the lotus flowers, and you can see all these maidens who held in their hands musical instruments. So it's, uh, it's even imagine is, is not so easy, not to say, but to, to make a, a painting of that. So which is very, repentance as a practice plays a very important role in realizing visualization, the appearance of Buddhas and Samantabhadra, and the accomplishment of perfect samadhi. The sutra describes how the practitioner is engaged in dialogue and interaction with Buddhas and Samantabhadra during his repentance ritual embedded in a visualization context. The more intensive the repentance, the clearer the visualization and the more visual details appear before the practitioner. In other words, Repentance has the function of accelerating the effectiveness of visualization. During this visualization, Samantabhadra teaches the method of purification of the six senses. 
The heavy sins of my organ, of which I now repent, are such an impediment and are so tainting that I am blind and can see nothing at all. May the Buddha be pleased to pity and protect me by his great mercy. The Bodhisattva Universal Virtue on board the, sh on board the ship of the great law ferries the company of the countless Bodhisattvas everywhere in all directions. Out of compassion for me, be pleased to permit me and to hear the law of repenting the evil of my eye organ and the impediment of my bad karma. So it is so it's also important this which, which is uh, uh, for me it's uh, it's especially interesting part of this sutra it is it gives a very philosophical interpretation of of confession in terms of the uh, teaching of emptiness uh, meditating on mind one will eventually re realize the non-existence of thoughts the emptiness of mind as thoughts arise from delusion these deluded thoughts do not rely on anything substantial like the wind, if all dharmas do not come into being and do not, case, not, not, do not cease, the question about the meaning of sin and blessing is raised. If the mind is eventually empty, there is nobody who can possess sin or blessing. If one can perform repentance, understanding the nature of sins this way, it is called repentance without the characteristic. Wu zu xiang cha hui. This kind of practice of repentance can result in purification of mind and body. The practitioner is no longer attached to phenomena, and can see Samantabhadra and all Buddhas of 10 directions every single minute. So it's important that we have the sutra, but we also have, have some uh, small records from the uh, uh, collections of the, of the monks' lives, the Kaosung Juans, that actually in, in the Tian Kang period in the, in 19, 19, in the 19, in 19 uh, region, there was a very active uh, cult of, of Samantha Badra uh, repentance. So in the Yungchu reign area, the monk Seng Pao established a hermitage on the mountain in Xuzhou, and there he performed a free week Samantha Badra repentance retreat, Pu Xian Jai Chan. Miraculously, on the seventh day, a flock, of, a flock of white geese descended and gathered in front of the icon. They did not depart until the incense procession was completed. On the 21st day, nearing dusk, four yellow robed persons appeared. They made several circumambulations around the stupa, then suddenly disappeared. So it's also have uh, we have a reference to an icon, so some kind of, of picture of it, which which was which was made of of Samantha Badra. Another story, in the home of a lay people, he held the Samantha Badra repentance ritual. On the night when they were about to finish, two monks whose appearance seemed to be ordinary came to pay their respect to Buddha. Some of the followers said that they were ordinary monks and did not hold them in high esteem. In conversation with them, someone asked where they lived. They replied that they lived in the next village. Among the lay believers, there was a person called Zhang Tao who found this very strange and bowed in front of the monks with utmost sincerity. The monks went out and after a few steps, they flew off into the sky. They looked for these monks, but nobody knew where they were. So it means all these stories, I mean, I mean, shows that at, at that time in the fifth century, there was quite a, quite a uh, interesting and important uh, 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 ritual uh, around the, uh, the Samantha, Badra, uh, Samantha Badra Bodhisattva. And later in the, from Tiantai, the Tiantai founder, the G was also influenced by the Samantha Badra repentance ritual as is attested by this work, the repentance ritual of the Lotus Samadhi, Fa Hua Same Chai, which explicitly relies on the Samantha Badra visualization sutra, citing or paraphrasing the text of the sutra. He cites this passage on the definitions of repentance and explains that there is no sin, blessing, or any dharmas outside the mind. By understanding that the nature of sin and blessing 
Like all other dharmas is empty, one can eliminate all the duty thoughts regarding birth and death. Okay, so next we go to my, uh, tell the truth, my favorite topic, the Samantha Bhadra in the Avatamsaka Sutra. So the Buddha Avatamsaka, Nama Moha Vaipaya Sutra, Sanjay Parpoche, Zhechaba, Shinto, Diapoche, Pamodo, or Tafan Kwang Fo Hai and Jing. Um, as we know, the, the Avatamsaka Sutra is a, is a collection of originally independent, independent sutras, which means that uh, the, the, the connections uh, among these, these, these sutras, which later became chapters of the Avatamsaka Sutra, is not necessarily really very close, but somehow the, the editors of the, of the Avatamsaka Sutra, they try to make a, a kind of narrative uh, for the for the whole uh, sutra, and uh, we also find uh, uh, in, the, in the sutra uh, depictions of the six tongues elephant. However, in this in the Avatamsaka Sutra, it's not connected to Samanta Bhadra, which we will see later often appear in the Avatamsaka Sutra, but to Indra which originally, the six stars elephant, elephant, originally in the Indian mythology, was uh, 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 connected to Indra. So in the Avatamsaka Sutra, we can read, Indra, king of gods, has a royal elephant. When it knows the king wants to go somewhere, it transforms itself, creating 33 heads, each head having six tusks. Chief in goodness, with the waters of seven ponds on each tusk, clean and fragrant, pure, steel and full. In the water of each pure pond are seven lotuses in beautiful array. On each of those adorning lotus blossoms are seven celestial jade-like maidens skillfully dancing and playing music. So he also we can, we can see here the, the sixth elephant and also we can see the ponds and we can see the, the girls also hand, handing musical instruments. If you see, this is also an image from the Yulin, Yulin cave, which Indra with the six tasked uh, elephant, but of course only, only the six tasked and the, and, the, and the white color, which is very uh, obvious. All the other very complicated image, I mean, is not shown in this painting. So the Samantha Bhadra. Then the enlightening being universal, I said to the Buddha, where is the enlightening being universally good now? The Buddha replied, the enlightening being universally good is in the assembly at this enlightenment site. Near me, he has never moved. At that, uh, at that universal eye and the enlightening beings again searched throughout the assembly and then said to the Buddha, we still cannot find universally good. The Buddha said, that is so. Why cannot you see him? Because the dwelling place of the enlightened being universally good is most profound and inex inexplicable. Universally good has attained boundless aspect of knowledge, entered the lion emergence concentrations, attained unexcelled freedom of his actions, entered pure abstraction and developed the 10 powers of the enlightened. His body is the matrix of the cosmos on which all enlightened ones concentrate together. In an instant, he can thoroughly realize and enter the unfragmented knowledge of the Buddhas of all times. This is why you cannot see him. So we see here, the Samantha Buddha depiction actually is very close to the, to the kind of state of Buddhahood. So Samantha Bhadra in the, in the, according to the Avatamsaka Sutra, it's a, it's a kind of uh, uh, version of, of the Buddha. We can also say maybe, I would say kind of after, the Buddha uh, became enlightened and maybe a little bit physically changed. I mean, Samantha Bhadra is, a, is his, his Nirmana, Himanakaya uh, version, uh, which actually is seen, is, is can be seen, or sometimes if you don't have enough virtue as here in this passage, uh, you, cannot, you cannot see him. So it's important that in the, in the Avatamsaka Sutra, Manjushri and Samantha Bhadra are both, uh, uh, both appear, sometimes 
is Manjushri who speaks um, in the name of the Buddha. And sometimes it is Samantabhadra who delivers the teachings in the name of the Buddha, or more exactly, after the empowerment through, through light from, a, from a various uh, uh, parts of, of Buddha's, uh, Buddha's body. So it means that in the Hawaiian thinking and data in, in the Hawaiian commentators, Manjushri and Samantabhadra were very closely related. That's why, as in the beginning of my lecture, I showed that in, in Tunhuang, we can find a lot of images on one side, Manjushri, the other side, uh, Samantabhadra, especially from the early Tang period, when it becomes, and Hawaiian Buddhism becomes uh, quite popular in, in, in China. And uh, so that's why this, the spread of the Samantabhadra uh, image is closely associated with Manjushri and is closely associated with the spread of the Hawaiian Buddhism. As far as I know, you, I, you cannot see any Samantabhadra representation where you can find Samantabhadra only alone. It's always to, together with Manjushri. So here we can see the, uh, those chapters of the Avatamsaka Sutra, which actually either the, the Samantabhadra, we can find some reference to the Samantabhadra, or actually the speaker of the, of the, uh, of the sutra is Samantabhadra himself. So if we, see, if we see all these texts together, maybe one third, at least one fourth of the sutra actually is, is connected to Samantabhadra. So, so Samantabhadra is, is, a, is a very important, important uh, uh, bodhisattva in the, in the Avatamsaka uh, Sutra. We can say even more important than, than Manjushri, which later became a kind of a symbol of, 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 uh, of Hawaiian, Hawaiian Buddhism. And, we, and his cult was very much uh, uh, popular in, in the Tang period of China and, and later even up to now. So we can find some chapters which actually bears the name of, of Samantabhadra. As the Samantabhadra Samadhi, we can see the Samantabhadra's practice. And we can also see one, one, ch one chapter, it's called the Samantabhadra's teaching, which actually part of the, of the Tibetan version of the Avatamsaka Sutra, and it's titled as Kuntu Zampo Tempa, but it's not part of either the, the 60 fascicular version of the Chinese translation of the Avatamsaka Sutra, neither the, the 80 fascicular uh, Chinese uh, version of the Avatamsaka Sutra. But which is in interesting, this chapter is uh, translated as a separate sutra by Shikshananda, who, by the way, also translated the 80th fascicular uh, uh, Chinese version of the Avatamsaka Sutra under the title uh, Ta Fang Kuang Pu Xian So Shou Qing. This sutra, this last sutra, this, the, the Samantabhadra's teaching is, is especially very, uh, uh, very interesting because uh, it mentions, it has a reference to the cosmic uh, Vairochana, which also later as an image became quite popular in, in, in Asian art, in, in East Asian art. Here we see, you can see a famous Kotanis uh, painting of this cosmic Vairochana. And uh, we have one sentence uh, in this sutra that all words of the 10 directions, all Tathagatas, all Bodhisattvas, all living beings, all forms of existence are reflected in the body of the Tathagata. So it means that Samantabhadra also has very close connections with, with, with Vairochana. And of course, if we saw, if we speak about the, the Samantabhadra, we have to, and the Samantabhadra chapters, or even we can, I would, I would uh, propose that, that in the Samantabhadra Sutra, in the Avatamsaka Sutra, we can find a collection of, of so-called Samantabhadra Sutras, uh, separate sutras, which were, which, which were where we can find Samantabhadra in the focus of the sutra. But later, these sutras were incorporated into the, the Avatamsaka Sutra. And there is also the last chapter of, of, the, of the 40th fascicle uh, of Atamsaka Sutra, 
uh, the Bhadracharya Pranithana, which is also a very famous uh, Buddhist text, not only in the Chinese Buddhist, but also in, in Tibetan Buddhist. So the first Chinese translation was made by Buddha Bhadra. It's interesting, the, the, the scholar who translated the 60 fascicle uh, Hawaiian version, but it's not connected to, to, uh, uh, to Samantha Bhadra, but it's connected to, uh, to Manjushri, Venshu Shuli, Fai Yuan Ching. And later, when we have the second Chinese version by Omogavajra in the eighth century, then it changed, it's called Pu Xian Pu Sa Xing Yuan Zan. So why is it then? You have a professor board, Professor Bart Dessen has an interesting, interesting article, article and interesting theory of that, why the, 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 the name was changed. If you're interested, you can, you can read his very interesting article. And it's also part of the, the third final section of, of, of the Gandhav Yuha, which is only the, the first, the, the third translation of the Avtamasaka Sutra, which actually includes only the last chapter, the, the Gandhav Yuha. Okay. So it's important that both the Sanskrit manuscripts of two larger versions of the Avtamasaka Sutra was brought from Kotan. The absence, the absence, uh, Badrachari from the Avatamsaka Sutra clearly shows that the Kotanese, maybe the only version of the Avatamsaka Sutra, did not include the Badrachari as a concluding part of the last chapter. The Badrachari was also translated into Kotanese probably in the 8th century, however, it is more a free rendering than a precise translation. Nonetheless, the Kotanese version proves that the Badrachari was known in Kotan but circulated as an independent work. But even if only the latest translation of the Avatamsaka Sutra includes the Badrachari, and it might give the impression that it is an awkward marriage between the Badrachari and the Gandavyuha, the two larger versions of the Avatamsaka Sutra also have several references to the Samantha Badra's practice. And even we find the term, the term practices, as in the Badrachari, although we will see the content of the term practices are different. So we, here we have the the very, very famous 10 woes of the Samantha Badra, which is uh, uh, listed in the, in the Badrachari. And uh, if you compare the elements of these three sets of 10 woes, and we can see that most of the woes can be found in the large Avatamsaka Sutra, only the praise of the Tathagatas and the repentance of karmic obstructions are missing. This proves that even if the Badrachari apparently is not organically connected to the Gandhav Yuha, the large Avatamsaka has antecedents of the 10 woes of Samantha Badra elaborated by the Badrachari. And the strong relationship between these texts can be established. And now from a different perspective, Wu Tai Shan, as you all know, who, who studied Chinese Buddhism is a sacred place of, of Chinese Buddhism, which is, which, is, which is supposed to be the the abode of Manjushri uh, because of the because of the Avatamsaka Sutra, which says that there is a place in the north northeast named Mount Clear and Cool, Xingliang Shan, from ancient times till the present. Bodhisattva assemblers have dwelt there. At present, there is a Bodhisattva named Manjushri, who together with his retinue and assembly of Bodhisattvas, numbering 10,000 persons, is always in its center, extensively pre preaching the Dharma. Just, just as a small remark that the Tibetan, actually the Tibetan translation, Tibetan version does not collaborate, does not confirm the Chinese Qing Liang Shan as Ri Pong Li, has a different, has a barren, barren hill uh, as, as a meaning. But anyway, it's important that, that Manjushri, one of the key protagonists of the, of the Avatam Sutra was connected to the Manjushri. Otherwise the Kotan, as we you know, as we can find here, uh, Kotan, it's a very important uh, uh, Buddhist culture on the southern, southern uh, uh, edge of the, of the Silk Road, which was discovered by the Hungarian origin uh, explorer and discoverer, uh, Sir Aurel Stein. And you can see here the, the, the river, the, the, the Kotan River. 
and and Kotan, and you can find the mountain is the is the new Toshan, which uh, which is also uh, an important important uh, uh, in the Chinese becomes important in Chinese Buddhism, as you will see very uh, very soon, because um, there's a new kind of representation of Manjushri, as you can see here. Here is Manjushri. In 1975, the new iconographic representation of Manjushri was discovered by chance in a wall painting in the cave, cave 220 of Tunhuang. And Manjushri here is flanked by a young boy and the bearded Central Asian man who is actually leading the Bodhisattva's lion, the third year of the Tunghuang period of the later Tang dynasty, which is 925. You can see here this, this, this Central Asian man who is identified as the, as the Kotanese king. So it's very important that Kotan and Tunhuang had a very strong relationship in terms of his marriage between the two royal houses. And, uh, and Kotan is, uh, uh, had a lot of uh, investment in, in, you can say, in Tunhuang because they, 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 they carried out the, the painting of several, several caves. So and here it is also back to the image and cave 32 of the Yulin. Here, which is a very unique representation of, of Manjushri, you see on the left side, and you can see Samantha Badra on the on the right side, where the Manjushri, of course, seen on on the Wutai Shan, which is the the usual Chinese uh, Chinese uh, depiction of of Manjushri, and on the right side, we can see Samantha Padra, who also rides his his white elephant with six tusks. But now on the on the back we can see we can see the new Toshan, so which is a very interesting change in the in the in the story of, of Samantha Badra, who now somehow is connected to the Kotanese uh, mountain uh, new Toshan. So in this way, it's a very unique as a representation. I mean, maybe as far as I know, it is the only maybe the only uh, uh, occurrence of of Samantha Badra and and Manjushri as uh, next to as uh, face to face each other in do uh, uh, in, in the Dunhuang Union. And then the rep representation of, of Samantha Badra is also connected to the Huayan, when and it's a so called, so -called Huayan Trinity. When in Huayan Buddhism, there are these three sands are regarded as a trinity, the Sanshan and Samantha Badra, Manjushri and Vairochana are said to represent practice, wisdom, and the aim of Buddhist practice respectively. You can see it's very famous Tazu representations of this uh, trinity, but in China, all over the place, wherever you go to, a, to, a, to, a, to the, any temples, any place, you can find the representations of these three, uh, three sands. Because of the time is short, I just, I don't uh, uh, say too much about Chen Quan, who has a, who has a, a small thesis it's titled The Contemplation of the Perfect Interfusion of the Three Holy Ones, where he's very, he elaborates uh, uh, the, meaning, the meaning and the, and the significance of Samantha Bhadra, uh, Manjushri, and, and Vairo Chana. But maybe this is Samantha Bhadra represents the realm of truth, Dharmadhatu, which is the object of realization. This is the matrix of Buddhahood, this entangled from the older afflictions of samsara. Yes, that's maybe. So <clears throat> there's 10 aspects of his, of his infinity, which Chen Kuan uh, lists in his, in his commentary, which now I skip as well. And finally, maybe the, uh, the conclusion. So we can see the Samantha Bhadra card. Samantha Bhadra, according to the Autumn Sakha Sutra, was uh, uh, depicted much more as, as a kind of Buddha, which very, has all kinds of uh, uh, qualities as the Buddha has in the Vatamsaka Sutra, but in the Lotus Sutra, uh, he appears as the defender of the Lotus Sutra, and he also represents the Buddhist practice. And in the Visualization Sutras, he became, he becomes the center of visualizations and the repentance practice. 
Uh, in terms of the, the image of Samantha Badra, we can say that the, the, even if the Avatamsaka Sutra doesn't give a very clear uh, uh, depictions and of, of uh, Samantha Badra, uh, Samantha Badra Bodhisattva, we doesn't remember, doesn't mention that that uh, he would he would ride a, a white elephant. Quite on the contrary, the white elephant is is uh, connected to the to Indra. But uh, on the Lotus Sutra, very clearly states that uh, Samantha Badra uh, Samantha Badra Bodhisattva rides on a six tusked white elephant, and uh, it is uh, also confirmed by the. Visualization Sutra, which of course has a lot of connection to the Lotus Sutra. So we can say that the, this kind of image of, of, uh, of, uh, of Samantha Bhadra, which basically the iconographical meaning is based on the Lotus Sutra and the, and the Visualization Sutra, but the spread of, of, of Samantha Bhadra uh, Bodhisattva is much more due to the, the Hawaiian Buddhism uh, and that's why we can always see uh, the Samantha Bhadra, Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva, either with Manjushri or we can see with Manjushri and Vairochana uh, together in East Asian Buddhist art. Thank you very much.